was a long emotional day of testimony on Tuesday as a judge heard from several people before reaching his verdict for Brenda Deppa. The judge says what happened was a senseless act of violence, but his mother says her son does not belong in the prison system. They're punishing that he is black. They're punishing that he is large and they're punishing his disability. That was Leanne Deppa's reaction after her son Brendan was sentenced to five years in prison, followed by 15 years of probation. Brendan was a special needs student at Matanzas High School who was caught on camera attacking his teacher's aide, Joan Adich, until she was unconscious in 2023. His mother says one of his triggers is electronics, and during the incident, she says his Nintendo Switch was taken away. She says her son has autism and suffers from several mental health disorders. Over that time period, he was on 17 different cocktails of medications because of all the professionals involved. Brendan's defense attorney said he should be tried as a juvenile because he was 17 when the incident happened. But the state argued Brendan had so much history of violence, something the judge mentioned when he sentenced Brendan as an adult. The judge said this wasn't an isolated incident and that Brendan had numerous battery charges in the past. The judge also pointed out that Brendan never said he was sorry. I saw no concern for Ms. Nadish's injuries, and Mr. Deppa has never expressed not even a single bit of remorse before this court in any of our many court proceedings. Nadich was escorted out of the courtroom right after the sentencing. The judge says Deppa can appeal his sentence and can do it in writing. Deppa is ordered to have no contact with Nadich. In Flagler County, Paola Tristaruda, Washington. Hi, Leanne. Miss Yandipa, hi, um, if you haven't, you may have not known who I am and anything of that nature, you probably have seen some local stranger here. I would like to introduce myself as uh, Mr. Christian Paul. I am basically uh, one of those content creators that you see up on YouTube, basically some average Joe that has, actually has a YouTube channel titled The Nerd Chronicles. Um, I know about The Nerd Chronicles and I went on TikTok as well. And I want to introduce myself as an average Joe as well. Now, why am I introducing myself to you in regards to this matter and want to maybe try to make a quick friend out of it? Well, I could definitely relate to what your adoptive son is actually mainly going through. I'm well aware about his situation due to the fact that he has like a higher grade two autism, ADHD, multiple other disorders that he's mainly has due to the fact that he has the most maturity of like a very, like a toddler, four or six years old, that is a bit, bit much complex on what he's actually dealing with now. So I can fully relate to what Brennan is going through right now and the way that he's actually been having like a shorthand that he's literally being dealt with is literally insane down to the T. And how do I know all this stuff that mainly goes about? How can I confidently explain all the stuff that he's mainly dealing with right now? Well, Leanne, I have Asperger's syndrome. I also am on the spectrum like your son, um, like your adopted son. I'm also on the autism spectrum disorder. Um, I barely get to make it because my autism is very high functioning. High functioning Asperger's syndrome. I have very close friends that do have the same disability as I do. And I've been in special ed classes with me and my kids that have much worse conditions than I have. And we've been together for around a good handful of years. And I'm still good friends with some of them down today. So I can completely relate to what the story that you're actually mainly dealing with. When he is dealing with like a tirade at like as the, as this given his situation and given his triggers. I've also dealt with a situation where I've witnessed a teenager actually dealt with like a near trigger in himself in which he was diagnosed with bipolar depression. When I was actually tutoring a student that has that type of issue around a year out of undergraduate school getting my degree in civil engineering. Now in my case, you know, when we were there, right? When we were actually doing things up in Franklin Avenue, we were actually being being very chill. And fortunately for us, none of us were violent. None of us had any of these triggered episodes that Brendan has, which is a wonderful thing, but I can't really compare his situation down to ours. But 
I want to try to let you know that there's still hope at the end of the tunnel. There's still light at the end of the tunnel. Because like Brandon, we were able to get along just fine. A lot of us had many big hearts. A lot of us are very appreciative given our situation that we all wanted to learn, that we all wanted to try and do big things. And we all basically want to felt like we had like kumbaya moments given the situation basically with our main teacher and all the other teachers around us. Um, Diane, God bless her soul. Um, condolences, you know, definitely we would like to actually see you down the road here in the tunnel, you know, whenever I'm, whenever my time is getting ready. Anyway, um, we basically was having a kumbaya moment thinking that everything is going to be all rosy, you know. You come down now to the top where you know you see multifunctioning people. We prepare to actually be as functioning as side as you can. We can have like a bigger edge shot. Come to find out during the time as we grow up as adults, literally right now. This world, it ain't, it ain't as nice. It's extremely cruel, more so. A lot of people that actually mainly run the world that are in powerful positions are very, very cruel and have very, very cruel and predictive greedy mindsets that you mainly are dealing with. That's why they actually dealt Brendan with the short hand. Now, Leanne, I, I, I know you're well aware that they've set up your adoptive son mainly for failure from the very beginning when it comes with schooling, when it comes to the whole system and everything else, you know. I can fully relate to all these things that's mainly there. Thank God. Fortunately, I was able to actually get, um, I'm very, very blessed by the grace of God that I was able to get an undergraduate degree as well as a master's degree. And I was able to be a PhD candidate for about a year and a half. Those are things that I'm very, very fortunate and very blessed to actually be in that position. You know what I'm saying? It's just very, very, very unfortunate given with Brandon's situation, given with his short end of the stick, and given with his unique situation when it comes with his disabilities and when it comes with his emotional temperaments and everything else, due to the fact that we, we're dealing like a very, 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 um, very, very complex situation. But unfortunately, given the situation he mainly has, the whole school system, the school district, those judges, you know, those prosecutors up in those seats, those state attorneys that you see up here, they do not care. They do not give a hoot at all. They would rather actually see him fail and rather see him suffer than, than rather actually have him seen being like a full-fledged citizen and being a full-fledged productive citizen, mind you, a productive, successful citizen that can make a huge impact on the world and as well as a huge impact into society. They fear somebody within Brandon's color, of my color, to actually do great things up in this world because in their mind, the moment that we come by, we actually get those positions, they fear that, you know, they're gonna take, well, we're gonna take away their jobs and get all this that they pool that a lot of them mainly actually came through and actually get all these privileges for. You know, basically had to leaf flock over everybody else that's actually trying to get all the stuff through the easy way. In some cases, where we should have people of other groups, people like us have to work extremely exponentially harder just to make sure you get an int, which is not guaranteed. And if we do, we still get sabotage, you know, we still get disadvantaged, we still get set up to fail, and even if we do nothing wrong, we still get sent to prison. Even with proven that we hadn't even done anything wrong, we're still sent to prison. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I know I'm very happy that you pointed out the discrepancies in that demonic racist judge that's due for retirement, um, the Honorable Flagler, um, the Honorable, um, I, I forgot whoever his name was. I know it's the Honorable Terrence something, I forgot his name. He was one of the judges that presided up in the deeper case that is set to retire in September, I believe. Um, that actually subsided over Flagler County. He was the same guy that actually dealt with those cases that involve two teens that have the same condition as deeper, both of them white, that actually, he actually gave them both probation.
juicy. So clearly we know that Judge is racist from the very get-go and he easily basically demonic Judge um, for what we know about. And clearly we know prison, you know, unless they have some sort of program where they're able to get like GED studies and everything else, which they have programs for. You know, in many cases, prison does not have people mainly go for a form. Prison actually can exponentially make folks worse because they have people literally isolated up in a wall for about a good 23 hours at a time with like one hour of outdoor time, which in my opinion is really not enough. And you have people literally losing their mind and having further further depression, PTSD, worse disorders mainly when they're coming out more so when they're coming in. Especially when he's about to serve, on um, Brandon Deeper here is about to serve like a five year sentence. And God knows what happens when he's in there. God knows what happens whenever he like does things like that. The way they're doing, like what the local politicians are doing, what these judges are doing, what the state is mainly trying to do. They're trying to sum up a fellow so that he'll be able to be like a repeat offense for the system, so that he'll be able to be a full cattle for the state, so that they'll be able to make a profit off of him as well as his slave labor. You know, they're banking on the fact that when he gets out, if he becomes a repeat offender, given his conditions and given his struggles with like his disorder and everything else and him not getting the proper treatment, they could put him in the vulnerable position and actually get him as a repeat offender to send him down to a state prison for a longer amount of time so that they could try to make bank off of him, which is a huge sin and a shame. You know, that whole system, that whole school district, that IEP stuff, that public school system that's not fully set up for him, it's not fully set up for people with disabilities in general. It's not fully set up for people with disabilities in general to mainly thrive primarily. It's not like the causes they have, it's not fully set up for people with disabilities to thrive as well because they require a unique learning experience to mainly get by up in life given their situation, given their unique situations and struggles and circumstances. And I also want to give a side note as well. Much of Florida, you know, with like some exceptions within the Miami area, some parts of the immediate Orlando area, immediate Tampa area, and possibly within Jacksonville, much of Florida is extremely racist. Much of Florida is extremely hardcore racist. They have like a bunch of blatant racist white supremacists that are mainly living out up in the state, especially up in rural Florida where you mainly live. Um, Palm Coast, you know, that area. And now away from Jacksonville, around North Florida, a bunch of hardcore white supremacists that still mainly practice segregation today. And even, e even if you got judges that are mainly conservative, it doesn't matter if they're conservative or liberal, as long as they have that hardcore white supremacist mindset, you know, like it's it, that deep, that deep perpetual hatred of saltiness and jealousy to try to actually sabotage any black person that they could come to. Even if they're autistic, they will gladly do it. How do I know all this? I have family that live up all across the state. I got family living up in Miami, got family living in Orlando and Tampa, as well as the Jacksonville area, Orange Park to be specific. I can relate to those things. I have first cousins that attended Florida State University to understand that environment. They know a lot more about Florida than I probably ever would know. You know what I mean? I can actually tell you this because I know firsthand through my family how Florida mainly gets down. So what I suggest for you, Leanne, to do is to have Brennan's attorneys file an appeal against the court. That's basically number one. That's definitely what you do that. While that happens, as Brennan serves his time, you, know, you do whatever you can. Actually make sure you save and invest, invest in real estate. Save and hedge your money financially so that you'll be able to create opportunities not only for yourself and your husband, but you also create basically more opportunities for Brendan the moment that he gets out of Florida State Prison so that you'll be able to actually flourish together and you'll be able to give him like much easier opportunities and much better learning avenues than what he currently has right now given his conditions and given his situations. Those would be the best opportunities that you actually mainly have. And I know you're a speech therapist yourself because I was definitely raised with speech therapists growing up and literally having them help me deal with communication and help me deal with subtle cues and everything else besides the two loving parents I mainly have in my home that are very successful in their own way. So you can take it from somebody that's living proof that's up in the camera right now that is in his shoes, you know, 
that was able to actually succeed and have the accomplishments that he has, you know. There's light for him at the end of the tunnel. Even though he's going to be a convicted felon when he gets out, there's plenty, and I repeat, there's plenty of opportunities for him to actually mainly come by as long as he continues to work on his emotional skills, as long as he continues to have the help and the proper help that he mainly needs so that he'll be able to be a full-on functioning citizen and be a much better citizen literally down the line, hopefully in the future. As long as nothing mainly sets him off when it comes to triggers and anything that actually takes away, because there are some people that actually are aware of that and they could be very, very cruel towards him, or there may be some people that are actually extremely unaware of a situation, and boom, he's in a vulnerable position where he's much more set up to fail literally down the line. Now to those, and to those Parents that have kids with developmental disabilities, it is always best to make sure you actually start them out young, make sure you get the proper diagnosis of those kids young, and make sure you discipline them the proper way accordingly. Yes, you should definitely discipline them as you give them time out and everything else, but you also have to understand their situations as well so that they will, they will absolutely be in a much better place to succeed as adults, as high school students down the line, to make sure that they get the right possible treatment. If you're able to try and limit their medication as possible, definitely do that. But I fully understand not, it's, it's not a one size fits all thing. It all depends on the condition of that student. It all depends on the condition of that child. It all depends on the circumstances, which can vary from child to child that with that with um that deal with learning disabilities and not all learning disabilities are the same and even though they may have the same learning disabilities per child their circumstances may be different the levels may be different so it could be a variety of things you know depending on that particular child so i i can't really just try and make it like an all hands on deck situation you know even though you know they have to be disciplined from the home early on there has to be a strategy given that um, individual child's um, situation, given the fact that that child has that learning disability and how to actually operate accordingly in regards to that. Now, to the adults that are currently dealing with disabilities, as I've stated before, this world is extremely cruel, especially black folks that actually have developmental disabilities. If people that, if you have some folks that want to sabotage you and want to try and do everything they can to actually try and delete and actually get rid of every single opportunity due to the fact they have some very deep perpetual hatreds and biases towards you, it is best that you walk away from them. It is best that you definitely cut ties from them and not support them financially or economically when they interests and find other ways and come up with some other ideas where you can actually try and do your best for yourself and try to make it to a hobby and try to make it to a point where you can definitely make money as best you can. While that happens, see if you're able to find a job in which people will literally value your talents and definitely people will value your skills and definitely people will value your situation. Get with people that actually welcome you, not with folks, you know, that could actually quote unquote tolerate you in that way or can literally disrespect you in any kind of manner. You don't want to be with people like that. You know what I mean? That's like one of the most important things that you really, 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 really have to literally get up in your head and actually understand. Because a lot of these mofos out here are extremely, extremely cold down to the cheek. And yes, as for the other adults that have developmental disabilities, they're not fully off the hook either because there are situations where I've been like some innocent people that have developmental disabilities that have been locked up on false claims for years. And they have been overcharged and they've been actually having injustices within various cases also. And they have served literally like unnecessary time given a situation that's dealing with like a mental health issue and they get sent to prison as well. Some, and definitely few, not all. Now in regards with Joan Nadich, you know, she is clearly the victim. This is in no way her fault at all. This is, this, is not, this is in no way to bash Mrs. Natick at all. You know, she's clearly the victim in this and we hope for her to actually have a true and speedy recovery given her situation because I am well aware 
Brandon's situation or the way that she did Joan was like, it was just deplorable. It's reprehensible. It's absolutely inexcusable. It's absolutely despicable. Unacceptable by any means. You know what I mean? And yes, you should be held responsible for it. But prison is definitely not one of them given his situations. You know what I'm saying? They know about the triggers. They know about the setups and everything else. Joan was not aware about the IP rules around that time. <coughs> so nah. She does not deserve any blame of this. Definitely, Judge Terrence Perkins deserved the blame. He's the racist of my judge. That she sentenced Brandy for the five years. But yet he has so he basically just um, dismissed one charge um with like a female student that has the same situation with Brendan. And like he gave he gave like the male student that has the same issues, definitely probation. So you know what his mindset's mainly on. You know. But in regards to Brandon, I definitely wish Brandon well. Um, given his long road um, to rehabilitation reform, definitely down the line. And it's a shame that, <coughs> excuse me. And it's a shame that most of the people that are supposed to guide in the society has literally failed them down to the T. But they even tend to actually do that by design due to the fact they do have very, very, very deep hatred towards him and due to the fact that they he, they fear his potential on what he could become once he becomes civilized in society. And once he actually does big things, they fear on how great he could become and they rather mock the position like what he currently is, what he currently has been and what he is doing. So, Leanne, if you have any other questions or concerns, given the situation in regards to your son, you can definitely contact me. You can definitely email me. My email is actually definitely there up on the, the about, about screen or up on YouTube. You're actually welcome to actually send me an email. You're also definitely welcome to actually message me through YouTube as well or even TikTok also if you're able to see this video. You know, I hope to hear back from you soon whenever you're ready. If you're looking for any advice or questions or concerns, you have every right to contact me. And I'll do the best I can whenever I have time to actually try to respond to your endeavors. I'm giving you a situation. All right. Best of luck to you, Leanne. Best of luck to your family. Best of luck to Brendan. You know, in the many, many years ahead to come. And the moral of the story is always walk away from folks that don't have your best interests at heart. Always walk away from people that actually want to try and sabotage your dreams or actually try to sabotage your interests the moment that they really see you at your vulnerable points.